by so many diverse uses when we're talking about cultural heritage material and their impact on learning, research, but also opening up to communities, for example, outside academia or specialized research institutions. And because of all the pressures, political and social, around us about maximizing the impact of these resources, it's trying to also unpick terms like value and impact and, and how do they relate in relation to digital cultural heritage. Uh, the partners we started with for uh, the network, um, as you see, is the University of Glasgow. I have a joint appointment. I'm half between the Hunterian Museum and half at the School of Humanities at Hattie, at the Humanities Advanced Technology and Information Institute, which is a bit of a mouthful. So you'll hear most of us uh, referring to it as Hattie for the rest of the day. Um, and it's an interesting role, uh, kind of a bit of a split personality or a go-between that um, helps me though uh, work with the collections and try to face some of these challenges about creating digital resources but also keeping the research and the teaching at the same time and trying to combine the two. The University of Strathclyde from Computing Science, this Ian Ruthven and Areti Galani and some other, uh, sorry, the other Areti, Areti Damala, uh, the two Greek Aretis here in the room I got confused, um, working there as well uh, as part of the team interested in a lot of how the information is being used and be uh, and able to contribute some of their interesting research on the use of methodologies and different ways of looking at the users. And Glasgow Life with um, all the um, cultural organization under that umbrella, um, together with Scottish Criminal Archives from the National Library of Scotland, as you know, we're all partners in the Kelvin Hall project that most of you uh, must have heard quite a lot about. And um, while we're going into this very interesting development uh, for this project, we thought it was very important to try to have opportunities like today to sit back a little bit and talk about the challenges and the different audiences and maybe the way we can work better together and use this also as a case study to do some research and understanding about different users and the use of this, these resources because the digital element is one of the ways that we're working together as well. Um, I said that the Kelvin Hall was going to be one of the case studies, so to, to make this work, it had to be, because we're working about the, in the cultural sector, so it had to be focused on Glasgow's particular characteristics uh, and how things work here, because they are quite unique, but also we wanted to keep the international perspective and combine the two. So I think it's important to try to have that balance in the next few workshops as well. And. Um, the way to do some of this and um, achieve some of those aims, uh, the main thing will be the workshops. This is one, the first of four ones that we have planned for for the next two years. And there's also an international symposium towards the end, but we thought it was also very important to keep the knowledge exchange with cultural heritage professionals and different cultural organizations across Scotland and maybe potentially beyond as well. So there will be interesting to hear your ideas about how, what would be the most effective way to organize a knowledge exchange event that will be really useful um, in a few months' time um, from you know feeding from the workshops and the other work in the next in the network. Uh, there's also public lecture and an open day that we're hoping to combine some of these things when uh, the Kelvin Hall portal will be up and running exploring digital collections but looking at also other examples from other practices. So I won't say too much about today because we'll sort of experience it and set the agenda, but just this was the initial idea of before looking into the future and the other workshops and the other events, to sit back a little bit and look towards the past and the present of what has happened in Scotland so far in terms of digital resources in the cultural heritage sector. So it was only possible to fit a few projects today. We didn't want it to be you know, two, three parallel monologues. We want to have space in the afternoon for the discussion. So we have um, um, somebody from Scran, uh, Graham Turnbull, we have the University Museums uh, in Scotland group talking about the Revealing Hidden Collections project. And um, there's also the collections navigator, so trying to, from the local to the regional and the national, to have a range of different perspectives, different kinds of projects uh, that try to work in this field. And sometimes we're at the cutting or even bleeding edge and, you know, focusing more on what were the lessons learned from this and try to be critical uh, and try to learn from all of that and open the discussion, keeping in mind that there were very different organizational settings, type of collections, type of users that were trying to address. Uh, 
I'll go very quickly through the next ones because, I, as I said, these were the ideas in the initial application, but they're open to reshaping and kind of feedback uh, from um, all of you today. We were thinking that number two should be on user needs and motivation, talking about how important the end users are and how diverse they're becoming in the cultural sector. So try to see, examine a little bit what the, were the ex expectations, and I'm just throwing there on the slides some just questions, and how is it possible, you know, in the face of diminishing resources, to cater for them, and how can you be strategic, but also try to identify barriers for um, to access, and also uh, try maybe also to to, to be more effective. Effective in, in getting a feedback loop and, and listening and, and talking to these different audiences um, and moving into participatory design approaches that we hear more and more about. And all this means quite a big change that not all cultural organizations are always accommodating very easily. And how, how is that shaping things within the cultural organization as well as outside? The third one we thought sh could focus more on methods and methodologies because this is a rapidly evolving field. It's very interdisciplinary as well. So from computing science to sociology, um, psychology, and a lot of other fields, there's quite a lot happening on trying to understand what users do with this material, how they interact with it. So we thought it was important to bring some people working in this area, but also talk more and try to question um, how effective some of these tools are, you know, the traditional question about quantitative versus qualitative, how can you combine effectively the two, and try to move a little bit beyond maybe the recording um, logs and what's happening online to try to understand why we have this data, which is always the more tri tricky thing. The fourth one that maybe after our project initiation meeting actually might need to move earlier and be swapped because it's such an important question is talking about value and impact and because this is so important, cuts across all the rest, maybe actually it should be the next one that's kind of something up for grabs because uh, we know in the academic sector with all the talk about the REF, this, no matter what kind of form will be the next one, but also outside about the importance of collecting indicators and, and data and proving the impact of this very expensive to build and maintain resources. Uh, but that's also sometimes very limiting. There's a lot of critique about that and the pressures moving us in that way. And should, is it effective to talk about impact or is it quite limiting? And should we try to open it up to talk about value, for example, and value to whom? And, and how do you record this again? So it's quite uh, fundamental issues that um, affect all the different workshops. The knowledge exchange event that I mentioned, we also have some bursaries we managed to get from the Royal Society of Edinburgh. We thought it was very important for professionals beyond Glasgow and Edinburgh to be able to travel if we organize something like this, to be able to benefit. And it was important for the network to feed in something practical that helps to improve the skills, but also opens up the conversation further in the sector and outside academia as well, because this is a partnership from the beginning, not just of academic partners, but also the cultural institutions that are crucial. So the symposium, we are hoping Kelvin Hall Lecture Theatre will be up, shiny, open by 2016 all in time, uh, to be able to host this, and again, having the combination of cultural heritage professionals and uh, researchers, and to also do the work of uh, not just the day, no matter how wonderful and successful it is, to have something like an edited volume as a result for this to be able to maximize the, the outputs. Um, we thought that this can be combined with an open event, what I said, maybe an evening where there's uh, an open kind of doors come in and explore the digital collections to get more people. It's one of the amazing, the very uh, nice things that the Hunterian staff are looking forward for the Kelvin Hall. Our front door will not be behind the academic um, real but also metaphorical doors of the university, but will be much closer to um, Kelvin Grove and the other, the, the streets over there, so open to the community, the neighborhood as well, and to, to potentially other groups as well. So it would be very nice to explore that in practice.